So welcome to this uh, Journal Club Meets podcast um, at the Royal Society of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus, a new educational initiative. Uh, I'm Parth Shah from Sydney, Australia, and I'm very pleased to have with us Professor Alex Levin uh, to talk about a recent paper uh, published by his group. Uh, Professor Levin is a professor of ophthalmology and pediatrics at the University of Rochester in New York. Uh, and the Adeline Lips Stephen S. D. Ching, MD, Distinguished Professorship in Ophthalmology, Chief of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Ocular Genetics at the Flammeye Institute, uh, Chief of Pediatric Genetics and Gosselano Children's Hospital. Uh, welcome, Professor Levin. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks very much for having me and congratulations on this new initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, Alex, you've uh, been initially at Sick Kids in Toronto. And then you were at the Will's Eye, uh, and then now you've moved to Rochester. Is that correct? That is correct. And uh, this research paper that we're going to talk about today is uh, titled The Re Risk of Uveitis Due to Prostaglandin Analogues in Pediatric Glaucoma. And uh, the authors of this paper are Nicholas Bello, Cara Lamatina, Jay Miner, Virginia Utz, Kaylin Dong, and yourself as the senior author. And the research was mostly conducted during your time at, uh, at Will's Eye, was it? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, so what, what, what about the idea of conducting this project? Well, there has been talk in the literature and uh, informally that prostaglandin UV uh, analogs can cause uveitis, uh, particularly in adults. Uh, and there is evidence that that's the case. Uh, we had been using this drug routinely for years uh, and have yet to experience that in our population. So it struck me that like many things in life, maybe kids are different than adults. And we sought to explore that, uh, that phenomenon to see whether it does occur in children. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important, as, as you said, in pediatric ophthalmology, we were reminded that kids are not just small adults and their physiology and other things may be quite different. Uh, so I think this is a really important study and I was really um, excited to read your paper. Um, as, as you'd agree, I think pediatric glaucoma is a very challenging condition with very few medical options. Uh, so it's important to have as many, as many treatment options as available. Um, and as you said, there has been some evidence that prostaglandins can cause uh, or contribute to uveitis in adults. Um, and with the limited treatment options in children, it's important to really tease out whether prostaglandins uh, can contribute to uveitis or not. Um, could you talk us through the design of the study? It was a dual center cohort study. Um, so it was an observational uh, retrospective review. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and you had 147 eyes. Um, and most of them were from the Wills um, Eye Hospital, but you also had about eight eyes from another centre in Boston. Um, it, it, was there a reason you decided to include uh, the second centre, even though it was a small number of patients? The more the merrier. Uh, we were just interested in finding as many kids who had been treated. Uh, and uh, we had two co-authors who were interested in the subject in addition to ourselves. So we just invited them to put their patients in and that's what we got. No, that's fantastic. So I think, uh, yeah, you had 147 eyes, which is a really uh, large number of patients. Um, so that's excellent. Um, now, in, in this paper, you um, reviewed patient charts uh, for new or recurrent uveitis during the first year of prostaglandin analog, analog therapy. Uh, could you just talk us through why you chose that time frame of one year? So... Uveitis in adults following prostaglandin analogs has been occurred, has been reported to occur as early as the first day after treatment, but virtually all the reports are well within the first year of treatment. So we wanted to be as inclusive as possible. We wanted to get as many possible examples of this event. Uh, we even included children with uveitis for that purpose, kids who are prone to uveitis to see uh, when it occurred, if it occurred. So we just tried to be as broad as we possibly could. Great, excellent. And um, most of these patients um, were on latanoprost therapy, the vast number of them, 144 out of 147. 
one patient was on Travaprost and two were on Bermatoprost. Is there, is there a reason, um, Alex, that most um, patients uh, around the world probably get prescribed latanoprost rather than the other alternatives that are out there? I think like most things in pediatrics, a lot of our drugs are prescribed uh, off-label. And we tend to go with the ones that are most tried and have been around the longest. And therefore, the one that came out first is the one that's going to tend to fit that category. So I think we just got used to using it. Uh, there are small differences in mechanism that may uh, make one advantageous over the other. But I think most people just use the tried and true the Tanaprost. Yeah. Uh, also being available, at least in the U.S., as a generic makes it a little bit cheaper as well. Yeah, yeah that's important. Uh, and most of these patients who needed the treatment were uh, uh, children who had glaucoma following cataract surgery. That was about 40%, uh, followed by primary congenital glaucoma at 17%. Uh, and then there were other patients with secondary glaucomas. Um, and the duration of treatment was at least 30 days. Uh, but most of the patients, uh, the majority of the patients received over one year of treatment. So I was surprised that only... Um, uh, five patients out of the 15 who had a history of non-infectious uveitis uh, actually had any uh, recurrence of the uveitis during treatment. Um, now, could you talk us through how you attributed causation of the uveitis in these cases or whether or not that could be explained by the prostaglandin initiation or not? So of all the kids that we looked at, only five had uveitis during the course of their prostaglandin treatment uh, after the onset of the prostaglandin treatment. And in each of those cases, number one, the children had another reason for the flare of their uveitis. They weren't taking their drugs properly or, or they had just had a prescribed weaning therapy, a gap in therapy uh, that as we all know in the treatment of these kids with uveitis often occurs when you don't take your medicines or when we try and wean them off the medicines. All of these children had control of their uveitis after their systemic or drop regimen was reinstituted successfully without discontinuing their prostaglandins. So they maintained their prostaglandin treatment and had control of the uveitis by getting them back on track with their uveitis treatment. So, we cannot rule out the possibility that the prostaglandin analog made them more likely to have a flare in response to a wean and treatment, whether it be scheduled or unscheduled. We can't rule out the fact that there was a lowered threshold that maybe these kids, if they weren't on prostaglandin, would not have had those flares. But all of them had glaringly obvious reasons for the flare we're able to stay on the drug after the correction of the reason for the flare makes you really think that it's unlikely that it was a prostaglandin. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And I think um, the duration um, or the time to resolution of the uveitis ranged between uh, two weeks and three months. And um, you've got long-term follow-up on those patients. So I think that's... Um, that's a very small number of patients who um, there's a good explanation for the uveitis to occur. Um, uh, Not to mention and, the fact that the rest of the study didn't find it. So yeah. uh, the study's saying, hey, this doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, you know, in these five kids, we had good reason for it to happen, and it did. Uh, yet we're still able to continue the drug. That's kind of pointing away from the prostaglandin pointing towards the lack of therapy. Yeah. And, and the, in these children with um, pre-existing uveitis, um, uh, the reason for the raised intraocular pressure, uh, was that in large part due to a steroid response um, that was causing the need for extra treatment or was there more inflammatory uh, cause uh, to the inflammate, to the uh, raised intraocular pressure? Yeah, we didn't look at that um, Specifically, as you know, there's many reasons for the pressure to go up in uveitis. It can be from uh, chronic uveitis, and angle clogging or angle damage. It can yeah. be from uh, the steroids. A, you know, we didn't suss out what the cause was. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, do you have any concerns yourself on any sort of long-term orbital asymmetry that can occur from unilateral or bilateral prostaglandin use, um, especially in children who may be on it for a very long time? Yeah, I mean, that's been reported, but I can tell you I've been using this drug as long as it's come out. And uh, with a very, very large practice of pediatric glaucoma, I have yet to see a single child who has had any uh, untoward side effects in that regard. Uh, the only thing I've really seen is long eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And um, are you, um, with this study, are you looking at um, following these patients in the longer term or uh, any future or next steps uh, in this regard? I, you know, I think that um, there's so little evidence that this is a concern in kids, that this drug is a concern. The only uh, ultimate way to answer the question, of course, would be to randomize kids with uveitis because they seem to be the ones most at risk for getting, if it does exist, a prostaglandin-induced uveitis, randomizing them to uh, a prostaglandin analog or something else. But we don't really have that luxury yeah. of doing a prospective study because you need to treat the glaucoma. You can't take the risk of not treating. You're not going to do surgery when you yeah. have a drug that's available. So it's going to be hard to do a more definitive study other than a larger study. I would encourage anyone who has uh, convincing cases where they think uveitis uh, was caused or exacerbated by prostaglandin analogs to report them. Yeah. Um, but until that time, I'm not sure there really is a necessary next step. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I think... Um... What your paper highlights for us all around the world is that it's um, safe and effective to use prostaglandins in children, uh, even if they have a history of uveitis um, uh, or have had cataract surgery or other pro-inflammatory things uh, going on, contributing to raised IOP. Uh, thank so you we, very much. We looked, at, yeah. we looked at safety. We didn't look at efficacy. Yeah. And that's yeah. another question, of course. That's true. Yeah, it, it, um, it was a safety paper rather than efficacy. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. Well, thank you very much for talking to us about your recent paper. Um, and um, do you have any uh, research that's coming up or anything else exciting that you'd like to share with us? Always have exciting things coming up uh, and uh, in all different fields that we're working, uh, mostly in the genetics realm. But uh, thank you for taking the time today and appreciate talking to you. Good luck. Get some sleep. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alex Levin. Professor Levin, thank you very much. And uh, we hope to chat to you again soon. Take care. Be well. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this WSPOS podcast. I'm Parth Shah and had the pleasure of interviewing Professor Alex Levin on his group's recent publication titled The Risk of Uveitis Due to Prostaglandin Analogues in Pediatric Glaucoma, published in the Journal of the American Association for Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus, June 2022, Volume 26, Issue 3. Their study provides further evidence that prostaglandin analogs are unlikely to induce uveitis in children being treated for glaucoma. For more information on WSPOS, please visit our website at wspos.org. Also, please join our WSPOS Facebook page and group, in addition to subscribing to our YouTube channel. See you next time.